Do you like my sandals and socks? Today, I'm wearing my McDonald's socks. Can you see that? It's a burger. It's been a week since my social media detox has finished, and do I think you should give this a go? Yeah, I think you should definitely give this a go. Now, looking into the future as someone who creates content for this platform, I'm not sure I want to be spending my time the same way as I used to. Um, excuse me? Say that again! Now, looking into the future as someone who creates content for this platform, I'm not sure I want to be spending my time the same way as I used to. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, okay then, buddy, yep, yeah, we get you, we get you. Hey, it's me, the guy from the video I just played. Late 2019, I gave up social media for 31 days. Since then, obviously, a lot has happened. I've made a few videos here and there, which you should definitely check out. There's been a lockdown, of course, and everyone has had to put their life on hold. Lots of us have resulted to staying indoors and doing nothing better than catching up on a few Netflix series. And yep, you guessed it, looking deep into the realms of social media on their mobile phones. Now, I'm not going to sit there and tell you it's wrong because, well, <laughs> what else has there been to do? But with there now being more documentaries on why the little device in your pocket is bad for you, in comparison to the amount of Marvel films they produced in 2020, I thought I'd challenge myself to kickstart 2021 by not giving up social media again. No, 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 no. But to actually give up my smartphone for a month. Yep, that's right. And how am I going to do this, you ask? Excited to use my new phone. Right, so there's your phone in your seat. Thank you very much for that. So this is my phone. It's my flip-up phone for next month. Isn't that sick? It's a 2.8 inch screen, which is fantastic. It can do 3G. It looks like a two megapixel camera. There we go. January is gonna be difficult. And being a creative in the media industry, I find myself looking at a screen literally 24 seven. It's bad enough I'm spending most of my time looking at a computer screen, let alone the tiny device I have in my pocket. And to be quite frank, it's making me miserable. My new phone. As you can see, nothing on it but the bog standard shit you- Oh, you get a torch! Wow! This month is going to prove itself to be very challenging. So this is day one, back to work, with my new flip-up phone. And I realise I have no access to music, so those new headsets I got, the Bluetooth ones, I can't use them. Can't use them. This is gonna suck. Because not only do I need to teach myself not to continuously grab my phone, but to also practice focusing my attention on other things and removing those bad habits I used to have. There we go, look. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God, the state of it. Wow. Absolute state of it, innit? It looks like my nan's old house phone. <laughs> Does it touch the screen? Oh. <laughs> So today has um, been quite the challenge. I'm having most of my meetings on my smartphone. I've now had to resort to my laptop, which I have to bring in to work now. Um, and that's a massive clump. <laughs> I'm getting better at this whole keypad thingy. Better get back to editing. As expected, I'm beginning to already see the difficulties without having my smartphone. From being the first and last thing I look at during the day, and then having that completely locked away. In the mornings when waking up, instead of spending at least 30 minutes scrolling endlessly through Instagram, it was almost like I was forced to get out of bed and start my day instantly. Getting to work, having not been distracted from my phone was so refreshing as well. Though, as the day went on, I could feel myself still having those flinches. Going to grab my phone and remembering it's not there anymore. Having my smartphone locked away didn't completely stop me from being distracted by technology. Oh no, I'd use my laptop to watch YouTube videos and check out my social media still. However, this wasn't very often, definitely nowhere near as often as my smartphone usage. So this flip up phone comes with a number of useful tools. It comes with a torch, it comes with a calendar, it can take and receive calls, but not texting. Texting sucks. Now, I'm not normally the person who enjoys a great text here and there. I'm more of a person who, you know, calls people instead. I'd rather get the conversation over and done with. On this phone though, with the numeric keyboard here, it literally takes me an hour to type the word ducks. And I don't even mean that word, if you know what I mean. On another note as well, I forget that this phone, along with many other phones I had when I was young, have such a small memory capacity. So every time I reach 10 messages, I have to delete old messages to receive new ones. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this was beginning to become quite the challenge. And it wasn't even the end of week one yet. What the hell am I supposed to do with myself for the rest of the month? It's content! Leave me alone! So London is in lockdown at the moment. 
So it's probably the worst time <laughs> to do this challenge. There's literally nothing to do. I mean, we'll guess with everyone in lockdown, it's not as if we're missing out on anything, is it? So, I mean, having a flip flow at this time is probably perfect, I guess. Not having to worry about skimming through Instagram and seeing your mate on holiday whilst you're sat at home in your pants doing nothing. Because you probably know full well that your mate is probably also at home in his pants, just like you. Probably more pigeons than there are citizens in London at the moment out on the streets. Move out of the way, move out of the way, dude. Although I hadn't completely limited myself to not using anything technical. Hopefully it should work now. That's how you should fix these things. Not having the same freedom to FaceTime friends, check stories and scroll aimlessly on Insta was really starting to make a difference to my day. The times I spend usually looking at my phone, I am instead either daydreaming or thinking about my next project. And every now and then, of course, food. And what makes it even more worse is that I can't even photograph my decent lunch and share it to my followers on Instagram. This is literally every basic bitch I mean, influencers, worst nightmare. And the camera on this phone is, I mean, shocking, to say the least. I took this photo of my friend Alfie earlier on, and I can't help but notice you can't really tell the difference between her and an orange at this rate. Honestly, how did we do it back in the day? In all seriousness, though, the average person spends around three and a half hours on their phone. And looking back at my last month's average usage, I am a great example of that. I wanted to see that if I went cold turkey for 31 days, would I begin to feel better about my day? Would my productivity go up? Or would I just be torturing myself? I mean, we currently are in the middle of a world pandemic and England in itself isn't really a place of which you'd describe as fun right now. So I'm now heading to Tesco with my shopping list that I had to write with my own hands. Also realize just how bad my handwriting is because I haven't written on a piece of paper for a very long time now. Man, it really does feel like I'm going back in time. Really annoying. Day 21, here it is, still in my pocket. By my side, 24 hours a day. Just a quick one though, ask yourself this. When you're lonely, where do you go to? And when you're bored, what do you do with yourself? You see, our phones are a constant distraction and escapism from whenever we're feeling these negative emotions. So other than embracing these feelings, I tend to go to my phone. I mean, I've bought countless of items off of Amazon just for the sheer fact that I've been bored. We go to apps like Instagram to get that sweet, sweet hint of dopamine as our friends I mean followers, like our posts. And when we don't feel like we've received enough likes, we then start to feel bad about ourselves, which is such a stupid feeling. Now being off my phone and being on this with absolutely fuck all on it, I've not had to feel these feelings. And when I have had negative things, I've had to sit there and literally get through it. And to be honest, I feel quite good for it. I mean, when we're constantly drawing our attention away from what's happening in the now, at the times when your attention is most needed, your mind has already been trained to ignore what is going on around you. Without getting super deep, but imagine what effect this to have on the people around you. You know, your grandparents, your mum and dad, your children. Okay, okay, I said I was gonna get super deep, but uh, moving on. I'll tell you something now, mum. It's starting to get a bit difficult now with this flip up phone. <laughs> I can't get my email on my phone or anything, so when I'm away from my desk, I have to keep going back to my desk to keep checking my emails. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Do I sound crackly to you down the phone? Does it sound like you're speaking into an old yeah. 1980s yeah, phone? Yeah, you sound a bit crackly. Yeah, it looks like grandma's flip phone, to be fair. Still on my flip phone. <laughs> How are you finding it? I'm actually not finding it too bad. I've still got a picture of Chloe's face on the front. I don't know if you can see it in the camera there, can you? Yay! Oh, nice! Once you can go back onto your phone again, do you think you'll use it less? Yeah, I've been considering like extending it a little bit, but if not, like having breaks here and there because it's actually not that difficult being on this phone. The uh, the vibration of this phone is like an earthquake. I'm sat at my desk and it feels like the Erector scale is like moving around every time I get a text. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few messages from Wendy this like the other day, and my phone was like. <laughs> So before this experiment began, I discovered that I actually spent around about three and a half to four hours a week on my phone. <laughs> a lot of that time was actually just aimlessly scrolling through Instagram. And then, dude, don't shun me. As a creative, I feel like I need to get some of my inspiration from somewhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Definitely got a problem. So it turns out in a week, if I'm spending around about three to four hours on my phone every day, I'm roughly spending about 24 to 28 hours on my smartphone. That's a day. Oh my god. Do me a favor now and look at your screen time and then maybe share it in the comments below. I'm intrigued to see what everyone else's screen time is. And maybe you'll give this challenge a go. I mean, it's day 24 for me and I feel like I'm doing really well. <laughs> Not long to go at all. And there's me thinking, 
Well, that's it. Apart from looking dramatic when ending calls and spending 50 pence of my credit to send a meme to my friends, there is really nothing else I can do with this phone. But then, all of a sudden... We're going for a close-up. Now, a mid-shot. Now, a wide shot. It even does video. I mean, the quality isn't there. But, well, you can't have everything now, can you? Photography is my passion. <laughs> this camera's terrible. We thought this was great quality back in the day. Look at that. I look like a Minecraft character. Oh. <laughs> the battery died. <laughs> to the pub? Oh, wait, no. Um, pubs are closed. Um... Yeah, this is going to be really difficult. Ugh, oh, get me out of here now. Taylor, Taylor, it's the last day of my flip phone. How'd you find me? It's the last day of my flip phone. <laughs> what the f*** are you calling me for? This is the last day. No one gives a f*** about your flip phone, you c***t. Ah. Taylor, it's the last day. Okay. I would be lying to you if I told you this wasn't difficult because, believe me, it was very difficult. Not having direct access to apps like WhatsApp, Gmail or Spotify was definitely one of the biggest obstacles of this month. Getting the train to work each morning hasn't really been easy either, though I have just got used to just sitting there either reading or zoning out. Most of the time zoning out, because I don't read. There has been loads of times when I've left the house with my Bluetooth headsets ready to plug them in and listen to my playlist on Spotify, then realise that I don't have access to that on my phone, nor does this phone work with Bluetooth headsets, which has been a right pain in my ass. Overall, it has actually been nice getting away from my smartphone. The constant distraction isn't there anymore. There's been one or two occasions when I've left for work and actually have left my phone behind. I don't know, maybe it's because I've been stripped back to just text and calls that I don't really think about using my phone anymore. Will I be addicted to my phone again? <laughs> I don't know. I could get addicted again. Got to freaking charge it. Can you tell from my tired eyes I've been up since 4 a.m. this morning? Redownloaded all my apps again, because why not? I ain't wasting time. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get addicted again. The first thing my dad sent me when redownloading WhatsApp again was a picture of his socks and sandals. In conclusion to this experiment, I feel like the smartphone, although comes with a lot of key benefits, for example, the instant connection to your friends, taking decent photos of your camera, and being able to actually download the game Snake, the cons at this very moment in time outweigh the pros. Throughout lockdown, like many other people, I found myself being constantly distracted by my phone. Whether that be going through shopping apps, taking pointless videos on TikTok, I mean they're not pointless, they're genius. And developing anxieties about how other people live their lives. Whether that's people who are more successful than me, my close friends having a better time than me, or just having ads thrown at your face 24 seven. And no Instagram. I don't want these glow in the dark green lycra pants. Thank you. Being off my smartphone has almost forced me into, well, <laughs> without sounding super cheesy, but live in the moment. So did my productivity improve? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Well, I guess without my smartphone, I no longer had that instant distraction in my pocket. So I was able to give my projects my full attention and do other things to pass the time, like, I mean, play on PlayStation 4. But, you know, I'm socialising with my friends on my PlayStation 4, okay? As you can tell, I wasn't able to give my plant all my attention. Uh... <laughs> well, never mind, put that down. I also didn't experience what I like to call screen time burnout. Yep, I made that name up myself. Because looking at screens all day does really take a toll on you. Trust me. I actually end the day losing motivation to make anything else because I've just been staring at screen all day. With a flip phone, however, I was able to take longer breaks, which was great. I needed it. However, I did piss off a few friends because apparently it was difficult to get hold of me. I mean, that's on them. They could easily ring me like the old fashioned way. Take a break, people. Take a break. So there you have it. Living without a smartphone isn't as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> okay, I lie. It was a lockdown. Sue me! Yes, it was quite challenging, but overall, I think we all need to remember that this little device in your pocket isn't important. You don't need it. But when it gets to the stage where you feel like it's beginning to take over your life, whether that's mentally draining, getting in the way of you and your family, or just being too much of a distraction, that is when you need to take a break. By all means, 31 days or maybe even just half a day off your phone. Just like the days when my mum used to confiscate my PlayStation from me. When I used to get really frustrated that I couldn't complete my Bugs and Taz games. That still gives me PTSD. I won't lie to you. But yes, please, I recommend it. Give it a go yourself. I will always encourage taking a break off your smartphone. It really does you the world of good. But I'm going to stop talking there. Thank you for watching. And if you want to see more crap, I mean, great content like this, make sure you click on this icon up here. And if you want to subscribe, click this icon right up here. So I'm just going to stand here awkwardly now. <laughs> yeah, this is great. 
Ooh. Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna go. Bye. Am I still in shot? Probably. The green screen ends here. <laughs>